Welcome to Battle Rankings. I'm Svetlana, and today I am with Rick. Rich. Hello there. <laughs> um, you want to introduce yourself uh, before uh, we get too into the details of the club? Sure. Uh, my name is Rich Bear. Uh, I'm from Pittsburgh, PA, and okay. primarily associated with Legion's Hobbies here in Pittsburgh. It's where we game. Okay. Um, so you said you're with Legion's Hobbies. What, what first got you started playing tabletop games? Uh, long story. I think, I think when I was eight, well, I've always been interested in history for one thing, and, and particularly in military history, you know, since I was a little kid watching TV and going to the movies and stuff. Uh, and, and I, my, my parents actually got me a, a historically oriented board game when I was in grade school. And we're talking uh, prehistory here, 1965. <laughs> okay, uh, so so the, the stuff that's in the history books today. Yeah. Uh, not so much today. I, I don't think the kids are learning enough history in school today. But that that's really another another subject. No, think, I'm talking about what you experience. You, you grew up and what is in the history books today. Oh well, you figure when I, when I was a kid, and remember, I'm old, so. You know, a lot of the people in, in the 60s, I mean, we we knew people who had been in World War II. You know, uh, parents or grandparents that served. And a lot of that carried over into the schools. I mean, the, the, the teachers knew them. So we learned quite a bit about World War II. Uh, it, you know, it's something that's not happening too much anymore. And, and, I, and I think that, that I kind of got a, like a lifelong interest in it just from that, you know. So it's more personal experience, I think. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, so what was your first tabletop game then? Uh, Miniatures? Team Yankee, Flames of War, the Napoleon? Uh, uh, long, long before Flames of War existed. 1968, okay? Uh, uh, a high school friend of mine invited me to go to a friend's house because they were playing some kind of World War II game with miniatures uh, and at the time really there weren't a lot of things available so I don't know if, if you young people know about Airfix company but they had uh, plastic type soldiers in in limited boxes that was the infantry and Roco mini tanks were the vehicles and they were 187 scale HO so the guys uh, yeah. I believe um, Andrew Hobson uh, and Able Company talked about Airfix. Yeah, well, he's well. an old guy too. Not as old as me, but he's old. <laughs> I believe they talked about Airfix as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. At the time, that was all that was available. Um, you know, uh, there weren't really, I don't think there were any metal figures available. If there were, we didn't know about them. And Airfix was pretty readily available in most hobby stores. So you could get, I mean, they had limited figures in them, and some of them were. Were, were like the old army men they were kind of stupid you know like guys throwing grenades and and things like that but it was the, like the, the, the it was plastic toy soldiers kids play with today yeah yeah but you know they were like ho scale so you could use ho buildings from train sets to um you know as terrain for your for your war table you know so in some respects i think i i really prefer the 20 millimeter or ho scale over 15 because there's just so much more available you know? yeah i think my grandpa collected a bunch of trains the yeah. old ho trains and we were just like don't touch them <laughs> yeah well you know we you know we were in high school i mean you could buy them and then use them use them for your work for your war games so yeah I've, I've never particularly thought about that maybe i'll have to go borrow some trains from my grandpa <laughs> yeah and, and they're they're close enough in scale that that if you don't bother too much i mean they are different from 15 millimeter but it's not really that apparent on the tabletop you know yeah it's hard to get everything a hundred percent the same um so what do you do uh or i know Role isn't necessarily the right word for uh, most of the clubs, um, but there's always one guy that's like the linchpin, or <laughs> and gets everyone together. Um, 
What yeah, do I, you do with Legion? Okay, I, I kind of, I, I'm the, I'm like, I, I call myself, I'm the grandpa. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I take care of the kids. Uh, I, I, you know, try and match them up when we go to the, to the, to the Legions to play to see that everybody has an opponent. Uh, I manage an email list, and right now our email list for Legions is about almost a hundred people. Now, not all of those, of course, will show up at any given Friday, but most Friday nights when we play. Um, and we play every Friday night, so mm-hmm. it, it's a constant thing. Um, we generally average 10 to 15 people, which is, I think, pretty good. And we have all different levels of experience. Um, we have uh, high school kids up to old people like me. Uh, and the neatest thing about it is there's a group of about seven of us total. Not not all of us will go up there at the same time, obviously. But we've known each other since the 70s, and we've been wargaming that whole time. Which is, you know, it's amazing. I mean, it's it's older than most of the people are that are playing up there now, you know, which is kind of funny. And it, I'm sure it, you guys it, get talking about stuff, and then there yeah. the young guy comes along, and just like, oh no, this is older than you. Right? Yeah. I well, I I laugh, I, and I tell some of the kids, I have I have figures, I have like lead walls and things that I bought back in the old days that I still use. I said, eh. You know, these figures are older than you are, you know, and, and they just look at me and laugh, you know, like, yeah, OK, <laughs> yeah. but, but the funny thing about it is we don't really. OK, dog, we don't really have an, any kind of organization at, for legions. We're not really a club, per se. We're just a group of people to get together in a game. You know, there's there's no structure. We don't have any kind of dues or organization or anything like that. It's just, uh, you know, everybody shows up and plays, you know. And, and it is funny because we keep attracting new people. Even last week, uh, an older guy, um, I would guess in his 60s, and his son uh, came over. And his son was playing Magic, which they also play on Friday nights here at, at Legions. And he came over and goes, yeah, I saw you guys over here playing. And he goes, uh, what is it? So we introduced him, and he went over and bought a starter set. You know, So now you got two more guys that are coming in. And, 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 and part of my role, I guess, in, in the group is – um, I'm, I'm kind of like teacher. Okay. Um, uh, I get the new guys and I run through a game with them and explain the rules as we go along and, and kind of help out the new people, you know? Uh, and often like I, I, I have so many figures, of course, cause I've been doing it for so long. I mean, I loan armies out for people to play. Um, so we have a really good group up there. Everybody gets along, uh, you know, and generally we'll play from five thirty until they kick us out. So. And that sounds like a good night. It is. It, it's a great night. I mean, you know, they, they send out for pizza. Somebody gets somebody gets uh, stuff from the from you know the hobby store. Uh, everybody. It, it's not just all gaming. I mean, some of the guys go up there and we just socialize. You know, there there are some Fridays I'll go up there and I won't even play a game. I'll just kind of like referee a game or show two new guys. You know, just be at the table to answer questions. So. You know, it, it, it's it's a it's a great situation, and and it's kind of we've kind of uh, blossomed out because two other hobby stores have opened up in the uh, nearby area recently. Uh, we have Fabricators Forge in Coriopolis, PA, and that's about a half an hour drive from from Legions. Uh, so the guys that live on pretty much on the south side of Pittsburgh, it's more convenient for them to go there rather than coming up north to. Pit- We're in the north of Pittsburgh at Legions. Yeah, yeah, that Pittsburgh traffic scares me. Oh yeah, especially like you know you, uh, on a Friday night, you know it, it, it's hard. So so there's a group of the, the guys from the south that meet uh, Friday nights at Fabricators Forge. Um, also, Fabricators Forge is where we host our local tournaments. So, I mean, all the guys in Pittsburgh kind of know each other, uh, and and you know, it just spread out because of location. We have a new store that opened up a couple months ago called Dragon's Lair, and that's close by the uh, Legion site. Um, they haven't really developed as much yet, but they're trying to. Uh, they have gaming tables there, and we know some groups, some guys uh, that meet there on Wednesdays, and they play other things besides Flames of War. They'll do skirmish games and other historical periods. So uh, they haven't really set up for Flames of War yet, but I think they're looking to. So that's something we may look into. I don't know. And no. uh, kind of just like from the different discussions from the different clubs, uh, I think just having a club that's willing to show up every week is a huge influence on 
um, store owners just to get them into into Team Yankee or Flames of War, some of these oh, games that are niche interests. Yeah, and, and you know, Rob Rob knows what I think he knows what kind of asset he has. That that here, I mean, and, and don't get me wrong. I mean, Rob's done really well. He provides the tables. He, uh, he's mm-hmm. one terrain is furnished by the hobby store, so um, we don't have to bring anything other than our figures. You know, which is huge compared to a lot of places where you have to bring the stuff in with you and set up a table and everything. You know? Yeah, yeah. There's there's a good few stores. Uh, the store that John plays runs tournaments at there, the store has terrain, but then he also brings like buildings and some other terrain that the store doesn't necessarily have. So we'll bring right. like an ex- two, three armies. If he knows I'm going to have to play plus an extra for somebody else. Plus sure. like five boxes of terrain just to, spread out amongst the tables it's it's a whole entire weekend <laughs> just because of the terrain oh yeah and, and it takes it kind of takes away from gaming time too because then you have to take time to to set everything up and and, and get everything coordinated and like if we go to Le- now at legions i mean we redo the tables every couple of weeks so they don't get stale um, and that's what i think we talked about it last week and that's what we're going to do on friday when we go up today is we'll just shuffle the tables around and, and make things different for everybody, you know, so you're not always playing the same thing all the time. Yeah, the, the, the terrain is half the challenge sometimes. Oh, I think so. And, and the neat thing about it is is right now, I think, and I think the big booming thing that's coming in the hobby are 3D printers. And uh, I just got mm-hmm. myself one about two weeks ago. It's right over here, if you can see it. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's right beside me, and I've been printing up a bunch of terrain and stuff, buildings. And there's, I think, two other guys um, with the PLA printers in our group and one guy with a resin printer. So we're you know, experimenting with more terrain that we at the hobby store. So Yeah. Um, it's, it's something that's coming up. And it, it's going to change on a hobby. Uh, I don't know whether for good, for bad, for people like Battlefront who are manufacturers. I mean, where, where it gets to the point where you can make terrain for way cheaper than what you can buy it for, you know? And I and think 3D printers will it's- yeah. definitely bring to question whether selling the STLs for models will be just as profitable for selling boxes. Exactly, exactly, yeah. And, and and once you start marketing the STL, there's a lot of good ones out there, okay. And and some are even free, which yeah, you can't really compete with that. You know, the only expense yeah. you have is 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 the cost of the materials and then paint it yourself. So it's like you try you you want to try and remain loyal to Battlefront because they're providing you with with the game that you love to play, but um, you know when you're looking at uh, twenty five to forty dollars for a building and you can print it for uh, maybe two bucks, you know, it's, it's, it's a question. And especially, especially for some of the younger people, you know, uh, who don't have as much of a disposable income as us old retired people, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes sourcing them a lot easier. I mean, even just a few years ago when 3d printers weren't nearly as popular, it was like, where am I going to find this? A 3d printer is a ridiculous thing and now it's like no there's affordable 3d printers <laughs> let's 3d print it oh and it's and it's like when when the the, the 3D printers are approaching the cost of a good quality print paper print and you can create all these things that you're going to use and, and uh, it's it, it's it, it's just amazing like i've seen some my lifetime it's kind of crazy but uh, you know, I think this is this is something that that is extremely useful for um, any kind of gamer. You know, no, no matter what what period you play, if you're not playing World War II, um, almost yeah. like there's all, there's literally millions of things available to print. So, I think it'll definitely bring a new challenge oh, well. to the tabletop gaming as a whole industry, just because of you either have to adapt to people have 3D printers, or kind oh, of yeah. get stuck and be like. 
you can't use three three D printed models during tournaments or whatever, and then right. Well, and, and a, I I know some they've done stuff like that, like like you know Battlefront has said, well, you can't enter three D printed models in your painting competitions and stuff, which is fine. I mean, that's I don't have a problem with that at all. But I mean, I have seen uh, a lot of gamers at tournaments, and I go to a lot of tournaments. I think you know that. Yeah, and I mean, some of these three D prints are so good that you don't even notice that the 3d printed until you look at them closely. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's kind of like, I go by like what they, you know, the, the old 10 foot rule, you know, if I'm standing back at a table and I look at something that looks good, uh, you know, I don't have to, to bring it up to my eyes to see, Oh yeah, there's lines in it and it's not really smooth, you know, but on a tabletop, it looks good. So, mm -hmm. And like I said, there is another group at uh, Dragon's Lair here. And they'll play other things, Murmurs games. They uh, all different periods. And they play on alternate Wednesday nights there. So, uh, but their group is about, I would say, eight to ten people. And uh, Legions, like I said, normally we, we usually get, on every Friday, we'll get at least 12 people. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, 16 or 18. Um, and that's a good size at, group. At, uh, it is. It really is. So you get a lot of variation. You don't have to play the same guy all the time, you know. And you see different armies because people are always fine-tuning what they're playing or trying another uh, nationality armies, you know. So it, it, it's a huge amount of variability. Now, a lot of times what we'll do is, it, it, and it's part of what I do as coordinator, I guess, is, is I send out an email Pretty much every week and say okay guys uh you know and i base our points on whatever the coming tournaments are going to be so right now some of us are planning to go to atc next week uh so we're playing we're using their points you know we'll say uh, anybody who wants to play flames of war let's play 110 points the way the guys that are going to the tournaments get a little bit of practice and everybody else it doesn't really matter what points you play at you know that so yeah as long as everybody's yeah. on the same page they know to bring 110 yeah. It's a good place to test playlists as well. If you don't necessarily have uh, somebody really close by. Um, if you know you right. have a, a game night coming up. Sure. And and, and and a lot of times you can see, even though you're not, you're not, I wouldn't say we're playing against a lot of top, top quote, quote tournament players. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, I've been there, done that. I've been playing the tournaments for years. Uh, we all know who the good people are. You know, the, play, the guys that, that are going to give you a really good game when you play. And some of the guys at, at the club here in Pittsburgh, um, some are really good. Okay, like Tim McClellan. I mean, you know, he's one of the best in the country. You can't you can't really argue with that. Uh, yeah. I've, I've played a lot against him, and he's, he's helped me pick my game up a lot. I mean, um, he, you know, when against the good tournament you, you kind of learn to see things that you won't in your local group so and, and i always say my, my local guys always encourage them some of them get the idea oh i don't want to be a tournament player you know because oh those guys will you know they're they're like really hard and stuff like i say i said no i said but most of the tournament players that i play with at tournaments all over the country and i've been pretty much all over the country because i'm retired i can do this it's my job now you know <laughs> but but you know, I tell them, I said, look, the only real difference primarily when you go to a tournament is that you're playing the same game, but you're playing it in two and a half hours. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's really the only thing. You know, yeah, you do have to learn how to pick up your pace a little bit, uh, you know, to move a little quicker, to make decisions quicker. Um, and but but other than that, I mean, I enjoy tournament play. I really like it. You, you know, get to meet people from all over i got i got friends all over the country now that i that i met through this hobby you know which is kind of cool have you gone to any of the international tournaments um not i no i, I have played war game europe on my european trips um we did we uh, we we do self-guided tours of small groups of about 10 people and i've the coolest thing i did was in 2018 uh, we went to Arnhem in Holland, and we played with the Dutch war gamers there. We played two Arnhem 
Flames of War games in Arnhem, which is like, you can't get any cooler than that, you know? <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds a yeah, lot of fun. Played, oh, yeah, I've played, I've played in Ghent with the War Gamers there in Belgium. I've played in Rome with the Rome War Gamers. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, it, it's neat because, they, you know, it's the same rules all over the world. <laughs> um, so you meet up on Friday night. Yeah, must be sp- Yep. Uh, and then you also yep. do tournaments. Do you do any other get- group events? Uh, we do, we do some large events. Um, a couple couple of months ago, uh, we did the Piper's Charge scenario that's in the uh, German Bulge book. So we laid out the three tables end to end, and and we played it out over Saturday. And we played we played for most of the day. Um, currently, we need to do a deep battle. We don't know exactly yet when we're going to do it, but that that's our our next big project for the group. Um, it, it, it's kind of cool. The guys like normally we do one on one gaming, we just like you know, but do enjoy big battles occasionally. So we try and work them into our schedule. Um, normally we do a Thanksgiving event which is something special where it's, it's like single tank on tank. And you have, uh, I think our last one, we had 10 people playing. So it's kind of, we do, we do other things. Yeah. Uh, and all, every year, of course, we get in with the uh, toys for tots. We usually run an event for that. So, uh, you know, sometimes it's a special event. Sometimes it's just a tournament, but um, yeah, we do other things. And some of the guys are interested in playing other things. You know, it's like, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I took the World War One airplanes off for a spin, and we played uh, Wings of Warfare. And the guy said, you know, it's something that most of the people had never seen before. So it's just that um, there's so much available out there if you want to you know, play with miniatures. There, there are tons of things to do, you know. I mean, personally, I've been involved in almost every period. I have. I played Ancients. I played Napoleonics. Uh, you name it. I probably played, you know, at one time or another. But... I like version four. I think it plays a lot better. Um, although as, as a real historical gamer and I, I like to hit, uh, I think version four is sometimes going into areas where I don't like with, uh, uh, I like version three list building much better than version four, for example, I think it was much more historical, uh, version four, yeah. it seems that you can get a lot of, you know, yeah, it's just it's just not quite as historical for me. But it's yeah, if you game. want to play I mean, for accuracy, like the there's game. there's accuracy, but then there's also if you just want to play, and then version four kind of like teeters on that line of mm-hmm. how historically accurate can you get versus is is it built right. for those who just want to throw something together that they think is cool. Oh, well, okay. Well, you were you were at our last tournament in Pittsburgh when we played mid war, and you saw yes. the mid war monsters. And yes. you had some too, so you know you're guilty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it kind of like you know, okay. I you know I look at it from the historical aspect, and I look at it and say, I say why? You know, I mean, okay, it was a fantasy tournament. Um, Okay, Ben Ben won because he had unkillable KVs. <laughs> you know, I'm glad I didn't have to fight him. <laughs> uh, but but you know, stuff like that, it, it, like it's okay. Uh, you know, as it, look at stuff and they, but they don't know that this stuff, these things were never produced or never fought in combat. You know, they just think it's part. It, it's real, and and to me that that kind of like bothers me because, like I said, I like the history, so. But, it's definitely something where, know, like, go with whatever you use situation games to be like, no, you can't bring X, Y, Z. You only these unit constraints or whatever, kind of like what they do with um, right. masters. Uh huh. Yeah, and and, I, and I, I just read a review online of the new British book that's coming out, um, and and they're using. Ram formation tanks. I mean, they never had them. <laughs> so yeah, why like, would you include them in, sound... a, in, a, in a book? That... Um, I, don't know what it is, I think yeah. the, I think it really 
wh where do you find a good place for these models that weren't actually in production? Do you put it in like Team Yankee where it kind of goes into like the Cold War? What if World War Three happens where there might be experimental tanks that were kind of in production, but also not put out on the field where it's like a what if situation or do you want to keep it uh, or to bring those models in or do you want to put it in the flames of war where it's just like, well, they produced this model during World War II, so it could have been played during World War II, so we'll play it. You know, here, here's a funny thing that I look at, you know, when I, when I have the group, I said, there's different kind of merch game at Legions, and I said, sure, everywhere, okay. you got the people who you know, made up thing, you know, and, and, and I'll talk to even people that have been playing the game for years, and they know really nothing about the history, you know, they don't know, like, how many of these tanks were produced, where they were used, and things like that, it just, it just, but some people learn. And, and the funny thing is, you know, we, you know, I teach the history sometimes up at Legions and, and the kids will look at me and I say, hey, look it up, man. You, there's always more information out there you can find, you know. So now they're well, starting there's plenty to get into, of things okay, going on in history books today. So you really do have to learn how to be a student at home as well. It's not yeah. just a school thing. Oh, yeah. We're I'm going to turn you around for one second here. I don't know if you can see this. And the room's kind of a wreck because we're getting ready for painting. But <laughs> these are my books. Okay? And those boxes are pretty much filled with books. I mean, I have I have a pretty big library myself. Okay? So a lot of the guys, a lot of the guys, that, you know, if they want the information, I have it here. And the internet is great. I mean, it's, it's amazing how much you can find any. You can watch World War II training for that. And you go, okay, how do I use the Zuko? Here's training for it. It's free too. It's just kind of cool. I need to in Pittsburgh. Else to tell um, everybody here. We have had out of town guests that pop in, especially because they know we're there every Friday. So uh, anybody's welcome. <laughs> Come on in for a game. Yeah. Um. What's kind of the start of the group? Uh, oh, the funny thing about it was um, there was a group there, a small group that played. Uh, Flames of War there before we even joined and uh, Tim McClellan Ben, ben Avonksa, there was a, a couple of guys that, that are long time players were involved in that and I think I told you I played Ancient so when that fell apart uh, Tim Hladen who was, was associated and played a couple of the Flames guys said hey why don't you come up and try some Flames of War so uh, a couple of us went up and, and met Tim and Ben and started playing and I think within a week, we've got about seven or eight more people on. So I think we about tripled the, uh, the So. Uh, and so you're in the Pittsburgh uh, Tim, area. A toddler with his grandfather. So. So no. you're in the Pittsburgh area. Um, okay, we're we're then, on the yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we're, people we're, come we're from out of town sometimes. Of Pittsburgh. Right. Yeah, we're we're on Route 19 North in Pittsburgh. It's one of the main drags. Uh, and also, like I said, they play Fridays at Fabricators Forge, which is right off 79 in the south part of Pittsburgh. And Dragon's Lair, which is coming along, trying to anyway, is close by Legions. It's it's also on uh, one of the main roads in Pittsburgh. So all three places are easy to get to. Um, recommend any of them. But like I said, Legions for years.
Um, and then where can you? Everybody, a small town, anybody, and you'll have a good time with us. So. Uh, and then where can you be found? I'm going to try and wrap this up a little bit faster since uh, you, since we're having connection issues. I think I have much else. Oh, where can you be found? Oh, This is definitely going to the bloopers. Connection issues. They're great. Are you there, Rich? I have like three more questions for you. Are you there? lost each other there for a second we did we did <laughs> what what did you get what should i repeat anything or or what here um well we were trying to talk about the area that you're in and we we're talking about like where the stores are and then i was okay. like and then i was trying to wrap up the close the last three closing questions while we're dealing with connection problems Okay, um, I, I don't know if I, I think we'll go over it again. Um, Legions is in the north part of Pittsburgh. It's on Route 19 North. Uh, uh, Fabricators Forge is in the south of Pittsburgh on set Route 79. And uh, Dragon's Lair is on Babcock Boulevard, which is um, real, it's close by Legions. So it's you know, more on the north side of, of Pittsburgh. So, uh, the, the locations there are enough that we get we, we can attract a ton of gamers you know from all different areas of the of the city there the funny thing in Pittsburgh is there's no real organized group of gamers I mean Pittsburgh has always been very very kind of loose and uh, fluid there's there's no kind of overarching group in Pittsburgh at all so you have all these little local groups that kind of, kind of meet together so um where can you be found like uh facebook or anything like that okay i'm on facebook all the time uh, pretty much every day because i'm retired um uh, you, you can reach find me there easy just search for my name rich, it, rich it's b-a-i-e-r um also my email in case somebody wants to get a hold of me is diceman rick d-i-c-e-m-a-n-r-i-c-k at comcast.net and I'll answer emails also. So, or uh, just for me at a local tournament, you'll probably find me. <laughs> uh, ATC next week, so I'll be there. Um, and then how do you recommend people find a gaming group? Uh, I think the easiest, the, the first thing I would do is go to a local hobby store, um, see if they sell the stuff. If they do, generally they can tell you who's buying it. Um, Another way might be just to go on to the uh, Flames of War 
uh, Facebook site and ask questions. Say, hey, is anybody playing Pittsburgh? You know, you might get an answer. Um, other than that, I really can't, uh, you know, the big thing, or local tournaments even, you know, if you're in an area that has a tournament, although some people don't know about tournaments, which is the hard part. I think we've probably picked up more people uh, through the hobby store than them from anything. Mm. You know, people just wandering in saying, hey, that looks fun. What are you guys doing? You know, so and then we hook them. <laughs> Hope for life, you know. Here we have a demo game. I am so sorry. The dog is back inside the house, and it sounds like yeah. the ceiling is about to fall in. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, good. Any closing thoughts? I apologize to any listeners or viewers about the chaos that is connection service. Right. Yeah. And I think even on the best podcasts, I mean, it, it happens. I see it. So it's like, what are you going to do? You know, hey, it could be worse. We could be in Florida underwater. We could be. And if nothing else, yeah. I'll just edit out anything that sounds like remotely robotic. And it'd be like, nobody okay. knows what's happening here anyways. <laughs> sounds good. All right. Well, <laughs> it was good. Good talking to you and seeing you again. Uh, are, are you guys going to ATC? Um, I think I work. I think we work. I don't know if John's going, but I think I work. Uh huh. See, another thing I don't have to worry about anymore. So, uh, what can I say? Wait, but is thanks. that the team tournament in uh? Uh, Fallen Fallen has a team tournament. Yes. Oh, John might be going then. I don't. Yeah. No, that's fall, not ATC. The ATC is singles. They're doing, um, they're doing Flames of War and Team Yankee on different days. Okay, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we have plans to go or not. John usually t spurs that on me last moment. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, and and I have to mention that that John Meyer, your 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 lovely husband. <laughs> Is, is kind of like an honorary Pittsburgh guy. So he's been here so many times. So it, yeah, it, it's kind of like, it's we cool. travel we quite a bit. We travel. Yes, I will be going to ATC. And for those who don't know what ATC means, that's advance the colors. It's a convention being held in Springfield, Ohio this weekend. And I'll see you there. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, and and I have to mention that that John Meyer, your 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 lovely husband, is is kind of like an honorary Pittsburgh guy. So he's been here so many times. So it, yeah, it, it's kind of like it's we cool. travel we, quite a bit. We travel yeah, quite a bit it, to go to tournaments. We're just in a really yep. weird area that doesn't have a sing a, that doesn't actually hold tournaments. We're just two out, two three hours away from any place that does. Right. Yeah. And I'm, I'm fortunate, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm a half hour from, from everywhere here in Pittsburgh. So it's not bad. I mean, we have, we have a good community here and I'm, and I'm very lucky. I know I, I hear it all the time from people that, that respond to my pictures. So I put pictures up almost every Friday of our games. So if mm -hmm. anybody wants to get a, you know, what, you know, what gaming is like in Pittsburgh, just look at, uh, at the main Flames of War, um, Facebook site and don't see my pictures almost every Friday. So, you know, it's a good group. I'm very lucky and I'm happy to buy. So, I don't know. I can't yeah. say else. So. Yeah. Um, thank you for holding on to listening to this. Thank you for our international listeners. Oh, um, <laughs> we do have a few of those, Rich. <laughs> oh, really? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I may, um, I may get some. Hey, you know, I, I know a couple of people overseas too. So, you know, we do have a few international listeners. Listeners, thank you for watching. Thank you for cool. listening. Um, like, yeah, subscribe, it's, comment, it's share. Um, hopefully, you'll never know that we had connection issues during this. <laughs> All right. Probably the bloopers. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Lana. Yep, thank you. Hit all the fun buttons. Right. <laughs>